And we're back. And with us live in the studio this morning is John Grace. This, this is Politicians Day. We had <laughs> Leon Dunbar, and now John Grace is, uh, of course, running for 99th District Court. Good morning, John. Good morning. Glad to have you on board. I'm glad to be here. Tell us about 99th District Court. Well, the 99th District Court um, currently is held by Bill Souter. Um, Bill has been sitting in that court for, uh, I want to say, uh, 16, 17 years. Yeah, uh, long for, time. For, for a while. Um, I actually uh, went to work for Bill when he was the district attorney, and he hired me to do civil litigation um, and, and be the civil lawyer for Lubbock County. Um, and the, the difference in civil and criminal being that, that my primary responsibility was not prosecuting people in the, in the criminal courts. It was representing Lubbock County, um, both the elected officials. Um, I actually represented all of the judges in Lubbock County. That was part of my day-to-day business was if they had legal questions or things that they needed answered, well, it was uh, my job to go in there and, and answer the questions for the judges. And, uh, and I did that in Lubbock County for uh, 10 years, from 2000 to 2010, and then in 2010 moved over to the city attorney's office. Um, but again, getting back to what the 99th District Court does, Lubbock County has, not, um, I'm sorry, has six district courts. Um, legislatively, they're all created equal, um, with one little asterisk that the 72nd District Court covers two counties, also covers Crosby. But they can hear any kind of case that comes before them, unlimited jurisdiction, any amount of money that you want to sue for, any of the district courts could, could entertain that lawsuit. These are civil courts? Well, the, um, the, the six courts are all equal, but by local agreement, three of the courts hear primarily criminal cases. So that would be Judge Jim Bob Darnell and Judge Billy Eichmann and Judge Trey McClendon. So that, that is the court you would end up in if you were charged with uh, primarily felony-level offenses. The other three courts, the 99th, um, the court held by Les Hatch and the court held by Ruben Reyes, hear primarily civil cases. And those are cases where individuals or companies who have, usually it's a monetary dispute, will come into those courts and, and so it's a suit one party against another instead of the state of Texas versus somebody on a criminal case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so um what qualifications do you have for this position? Well, I, I, been, I mean, why would we hire you? Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> that, 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 it's a, that, and, you know, I've always viewed this as a job interview. Uh, you know, I'm uh, not, this is not something that anybody's entitled to. Um, I have been practicing law for about 20, well, it's 26, 27 years. I was licensed in 1993. I spent the first seven or eight years, and, and I always kind of put that plus or minus on there because it's, you know, nine years, ten months, things like that. But, but I spent the first part of my practice in private practice, and that meant I actually went out and found clients. Uh, it's like running a small business. I mean, I opened the, the locks in the morning and turned the lights on and shut them down at night. But I had to go out and find clients, and I represented them on things like personal injury suits if they were injured in a car accident. I represented small businesses and that included things like contract disputes and, and disputes between vendors. Um, I did a whole bunch of family law, uh, divorces, child custody, child support cases, mm-hmm. um, a lot of consumer law, uh, uh, deceptive trade practice act cases, um, and then some criminal and juvenile thrown in just to make it, uh, make it interesting. But I did that for eight years, then went to work for Lubbock County doing, uh, pri- and it, the, the litigation side was primarily defense work. So I defended the county in car wreck cases. I also uh, defended the county on civil rights lawsuits, and that would be where uh, sheriff's deputies or the jail were being sued uh, for violating somebody's and, civil and that rights. that probably happens a lot more than it shows in yeah. the news. <laughs> it, well, and, and a lot of those are, are what are called pro se cases, which means there's no lawyer involved. The inmate sitting in jail, um, in fact, they even have forms. So the inmate goes down to the library gets a form fills it out and he has a lawsuit and but they're but they're real lawsuits and and occasionally there's some merit to them a lot of times it's explaining to the court why that particular case has no merit and you know even if you accept everything that the the inmate says as true there's simply no lawsuit there to go forward on and and, and an example would be that a, an inmate slips and falls you know, in the in his jail cell, and then sues the jail for inflicting um, cruel and unusual punishment. Well, the jail didn't punish him; he slipped and fell. Yeah, you know, you know. gotcha. 
Um, anyway, but I did that uh, for, for 10 years. And then in 2010, was hired away from the county to go to work for the city of Lubbock, which is where I work now. So I'm an assistant city attorney. And I continue to do litigation on behalf of the city. And it continues to be car wreck cases and civil rights cases. What's, what's the biggest problem you face uh, at the 99th District Court? Um, I, I really, uh, I, I don't think the 99th has any huge problems right now. Uh, Judge Souter has done a great job of managing his docket. So this is not a court where, where as candidates, we're going into it saying, you know, we've got 10,000 cases that have been sitting there for, you know, three years and are waiting to be heard. Uh, Judge Souter's done a, a really good job of keeping his docket in check. Um, so really, it's it's maintaining continuity and keeping up the the management that that uh, that Bill has has been doing uh, since his time on the bench. Mm. Okay. So um, just uh, you said it's mostly civil cases uh, that would be in this court. Um, d- does this court get criminal cases from time to time? Is it more of a if the other courts can't handle it? How how does that work? That that's more how they would come up um, and. And that's something that is kind of a judicial preference. So whichever judge is in the court, um, and that is something that I would be very interested in doing. When you hear about some issues with the courts right now, generally the complaint um, is that there are criminal cases that are kind of piling up. I mean, I, I think when you were talking to uh, Leanne Dumbald mm-hmm. earlier, and she was talking about how they're looking at having to add on to the jail. Well, everybody that's sitting out of the jail is waiting for their case to go to court. Yeah. And... Um, and one way that the 99th can help with that is particularly on routine issues. So people who all they need to do, the, the person needs to come in and plead guilty to the offense and be sentenced. Well, that's something that the 99th District Court has the legal authority to do. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of, of getting that case moved over from another court so that, so that he can be heard and, and then get that person out of the jail. So this, one thing that she was talking about was uh, adding, adding a court. Do we need another district court in this area? You know, that's something um, I think eventually we will. Lubbock is growing and it is a population driven um, equation. Um, you can get by without having a new court for a while. And, and what it means is, well, you're everybody's just working a little bit harder. You stay late. But there's a point at which um, in order to be efficient, you, you might need to look at another court. I don't know if we're there yet. Um, the, the county has a very good office of court administration that does all of the kind of the behind the scenes um, work on keeping statistics, and that would be the the place where it, it's kind of like um, the uh, what is it the the office of management and budget. They they turn out reports and can tell you here's how many cases were filed, here's how many got disposed of, and they have the statistics that I think would kind of drive. Now it's time to go to the legislature and ask for another court. But there's some things you can do in the meantime. One, work harder and. You know, I'm certainly willing to, to do that. Stay late, come in early, work on the mm-hmm. weekends if we have to to move some cases. But the other thing you can do is create um, what are called associate courts, which is essentially a higher judge. And we have one now for family law matters, uh, Stephen Johnson, who, who hears a lot of preliminary matters in, in family law cases. And uh, where, where the, the parties just need a, an up or down call on something and in order to move forward, um, and so he can make those calls, and they're subject to being reviewed by a district judge, but it helps kind of move things along. Um, you can kind of think of it like, you know, you've got the, the guy on the other side of the glass, the board operator, mm-hmm. who takes care of a lot of your kind of day-to-day stuff so that you can focus on what goes out over the air. Well, that's kind of what the associate judges do for the, okay. for the district judges. Mm-hmm. And that's a stopgap that you can do at a little bit lower cost than actually creating an entirely new court. Um, to, uh, to kind of give some breathing room mm. before yeah. you say, okay, legislature, we need you to create a seventh district court for Lubbock County. It sounds like that your your experience has been more in the civil area. So um, you, it, I guess yeah. you're better suited for the 99th court. Well, that, that's why um, in this election cycle, there were two courts that came open. Jim Bob Darnell retired from the 140th, which is a criminal court or primarily criminal court. And then Souter retired from the 99th. And, and I was approached to run first for the 140th before uh, Judge Souter had announced. And, and I decided, no, I want to I see what Judge Souter is going to do. I would rather do a, a civil bench. Um, but I, I do have a lot of experience with the criminal courts, even working in the DA's office. I went over and would handle criminal matters, and a lot of the civil work that I did bled into the criminal courts. 
And so that's something where, I mean, I'd, I'd be fine if we had criminal cases that need to bounce over to the 99th. I'm fine doing that. So we've got about a minute yeah. left. Uh, okay. Is there anything you just want to say right quick that maybe we didn't cover that uh, just to kind of end it out? Well, the, the other thing that, um, that I really haven't heard many people talk about is that the district courts have an oversight role over the commissioner's court. Um, it's the district judges, for example, who appoint the county auditor. And right now there's a lot of talk of needing to get a better flow of information from the county auditor down to the county commissioners. And that's something that as a district judge, A, I'm aware of, and B, I would help facilitate to, to make sure that if the, the commissioners need financial information that the auditor has, that they get it from the auditor who would report to the district judges. Okay. And how do we get more information about you? A website? <laughs> Absolutely. I've got a website. Um, it's johngrace4judge.com and F-O-R spelled out. Mm-hmm. I'm also on Facebook at John Grace 4 judge Okay. Uh, All right. Very good. And, uh, and good luck. Thank you. Yeah. That's Thanks. John Grace running for 99th District Court.